The Goat House is back with score predictions and picks against the spread for every single NFL Week 3 game. We are here every Wednesday with this video. The slate of games this week, incredible. Cannot wait to break these games down. Let's take a look at them. Thursday night football and AFC East battle. The Patriots in the Jets. The Jets' first home game. I think they can kind of get to where we expected them to, to play this year. They've been a little underwhelming. They are 1-1, one one, but I think they get going a little bit more in this one. The Patriots do have a good defense, but... Yeah, the Seahawks were able to throw on them a bit. So I think Rodgers and company find some things on film and they'll do a little, you know, some damage, nothing crazy. I got them scoring 23 and the Patriots have been impressive. They look better than expected. I do think we're going to get to the point where maybe they start to look like the team we expected. You know, they, they weren't even super confident about themselves, you know, keeping Drake May on the bench, uh, not risking anything that they don't feel like the team is right for him. So I don't think they're going to play as good as they're playing right now all year. I think they'll have some issues with the Jets' defense this week. But, again, they have looked a little better than expected. They're getting six points. I have the Jets covering. Got a feeling it's kind of like a, a kind of a breakout game at home for the Jets. But it's not one I would bet on because the Patriots have been playing pretty impressive where you could possibly see a three-point game perhaps. But fairly confident with the Jets at home on Thursday Night Football winning 23-13. Uh, but if the Patriots win this one, you start to like we're kind of locking it in that the Patriots are definitely not just an assumption anymore. They're definitely better than expected, and the Jets are very underwhelming. You know, obviously disappointing if they can't pull this one off. But I have the Jets taking care of business. On to the Sunday slate of games. The Giants are plus six, heading to Cleveland to take on the Browns. I have the Browns winning nineteen to sixteen, so fairly close. I think the Browns will have a comfortable lead, not a big lead. You know, they won't be playing from behind. So I am confident with the Browns. I, think, I just think it stays a little close for multiple reasons. I do like the Giants' defensive line. The Browns' offense still fully isn't there yet. They started okay last game, but got to put a full game together. The tackles are a little beat up. We'll see if either Conklin or Wills plays. Um, you know, not much going to the passing. I think the running game's there. They're just not doing it enough. So six felt like a lot for the Browns' offense, plus the Giants played a little better last week. And then something that happens every year in week three in the NFL, the 0-2 teams seem to be a little sneaky against the spread, not all necessarily winning the game outright. They could be sneaky in that regard as well. But 0-2 teams in week three, a little sneaky. They do pretty well against the spread uh, because I think teams usually think they have them figured out, but don't. So I think this one stays a little closer than expected. Neighbors is really getting going. I think no matter how good the defense is, the Browns defense is great. I think Neighbors uh, still plays a fairly fairly solid game. Singletary got going minus the fumble last week a little bit. Daniel Jones played a little bit better. Jones could be in trouble with Miles Garrett and company. His defense is really good, but I, yeah, it's just tough to pick the Browns minus six, covering six, even though they could, but because the offense so. Stay somewhat close, but pretty confident with Cleveland. If they don't win this game, it's, it's you know you start you start to worry a little bit more on them. But they handled business against the Jacks last week, and I have them winning this week. All right, things get interesting with this one. Packers at Titans. Right now, the Packers are plus two and a half, and we have two scores up there for the Packers. But right before going to record this, I had to add that second score with Love because Love is practicing fully right now, doing all the drills. So that's interesting, and he was questionable at some point last week and then went down to doubtful, so that kind of made you think he could play this week. But him practicing doesn't fully mean he will play, so it's a little up in the air. We'll see where the line goes, but I was originally predicting with Malik Willis playing against his former team in the Tennessee Titans, and I was pretty confident with the Titans handling business in that one, 16 210 because it's not the Colts defense that can't stop the run. It is the Titans defense that is very good and very good stopping the run. Well, they won't stop Josh Jacobs. They'll slow him down. Willis won't be able to do much. They'll probably create a turnover. And I think the Titans offense, even the defense could score, the offense could do just enough and win 16 and 10, 16 to 10. And if that's the case, you see down here, I would bet the under if love is out. Uh, 37 is pretty low, but I am not expecting much. Again, the Titans' defense is very stout, very stout against the run. It's one of the better defenses in football right now, even though they're 0-2. Again, 0-2 teams historically are super sneaky in Week 3, so watch out for that. Tough to game plan for when they're still not fully figured out. Uh, but now it sounds like, and that's where the 20 comes in, if Love plays, I'm going to pick the Packers 20-16, to even though the 0-2 Titans could be sneaky, they're better than their record. And I still have the Titans scoring 16. Usually, you know, get better at quarterback, you actually could drop that, that prediction down a little bit uh, because it, it could be 
become tougher. The Packers could hold the ball longer, but and the Titans could be hitting the brakes a little bit if they're up and beating a Malik Willis Packers team, where if they're battling with a, a really good love Packers team, they might be put, trying to push the ball a little bit more where they can you know, still score some points. So, and love, if you play, you know, I thought about having them score more, but again, Titans defense, really good. They could take the run away and love uh, hard for me to imagine. He's a hundred percent if, if he's playing. So uh, we're going against a good defense. So, you know, has that turnover potential as well. So if Malik Willis plays 16 to 10 Titans, like the defense at home. And I like the under in that game. If Jordan love plays, I wouldn't touch anything. Uh, unless it's still Packers plus two and a half, but it won't be. If you are confident that Love is going to play, maybe jump on that, but they dropped it from three to two and a half. So Vegas really isn't sure. Usually they know before everyone else. So it's up in the air. So I think it's the first time I've ever done this with two scores on a team. And typically I would do two scores on both teams. But like I explained, I think the Titans could try to push the ball more if Love plays, resulting in the same amount of points for me at least. But um, yeah, so only like putting money on it if, uh, Willis is the quarterback if Love is out. I actually really like the Titans in that one, even though it could stay close. Uh, but I do like it at two and a half better than three, again, if Love is out. So there you have it on an interesting one coming up this Sunday. But either way, it could be a good game. Bears versus the Colts. And the Colts are favored in this one, which is a little surprising to me. But maybe Vegas, you know, kind of thinking the Colts are better in their record, which they very well could be. And this is one of those, like I've been talking about, like I've been talking about throughout this video, one of those 0-2 teams that are very sneaky in week three and they're not even playing the best team in the world so I guess I could see it but I'm a matchup guy you know break it down on the field I'm the matchup sides with the Bears the Bears really should get things going on the ground right the Colts are struggling to stop the run and the four star player DeForest Buckner is out I think DeAndre Swift really gets going on the ground in this game and that could open some things up for Caleb Williams I don't think they go crazy offensively but they should be able to do enough here and then defensively the Bears defense is really really good and they're playing against a struggling young quarterback I think Anthony Richardson, Anthony Richardson could still make some plays he'll make some plays in this game I think he'll be good on the ground to him and Taylor that'd be the way the Colts could win this game if Caleb Williams still struggles and the Bears try to pass way more than they're running and the Colts pound the ball with their quarterback and their running back that's how they win it but it's going to be tough for the Colts to throw on this Bears defense. I think the Bears defense can make some plays, and the Bears should be able to get some offense going on the ground against a weak run defense without a star player in Forrest Buckner. So matchup says Bears 20-17. to I was going to say bet on the Bears' money line. You could throw a couple bucks on it still. Why not? But it does feel a little bit like a trap. It's hard to call it a trap because the Colts are favored. Um, but because the Colts – I feel like the Colts are – they look good against the Texans for the most part. Like, they got to be better than their record. Last week was brutal, but maybe Richardson just torches them on the ground, And but maybe the Bears offense still is stale, can't do much. But uh, So I could see it. But the matchup to me, which sometimes the matchup doesn't play as much of a factor in the early weeks than it does. The, it plays a huge factor uh, midseason and on, in the playoffs especially. Uh, but I'm going to go with the matchup. You know, X's and O's here, what I what I feel could happen. So I'll take the Bears 20-17. to 17 which could be a pretty good game. Must win for both teams here. Texans and Vikings, two 2-0 two teams that look really good right now in Minnesota. Tough place to play. It's a tough one to pick, especially against the spread. Would not bet on it. I'm going to take the Texans 24-23, but Brian Flores' defense looks really good right now. Looks really creative. He looks like the best defensive coach in football right now. And C.J. Stroud, as good as he is, he's still young. I guess he's still learning. So that maybe could be a tough challenge for him. It's very tough for Brock Purdy, who's been looking good. Uh, he can't play against it. So that could be the reason the Vikings win this game. They do have a pretty solid offense. I do think D'Amico Ryan's one of the better defensive coach football, could scheme up something for Sam Darnold. Again, a team that's a no Hawkinson. Addison's a little banged up. I think Jefferson plays. He's day-to-day, -day, but he's a little banged up. Um, you know, I, I think he schemes up something pretty well. And then you're looking at the tape against the Bears. They blitz, which they normally don't do. So it's like, all right, now we kind of have to game plan for that, even though I don't think they're going to do it that much. And it kind of creates mind games with, your, with yourself, you know. So for those reasons, well, another big reason, is, I, I think they can go either way. But another big reason is, 
you know, Vikings defense looks really good, but can they account for all these receivers? Nico Collins actually looks like the best receiver in football right now. Is he actually the best receiver in football? It's tough to say. Justin Jefferson really is, and he look, kind of looked like it last week. But Nico Collins looks insane. You have to deal with him. They even put him in the slot sometimes last week. Then you have Diggs, revenge game. He can play outside in the slot, and Tank Dell's a weapon as well. So can they account for all those guys in Dalton Schultz? You know, um, can't wait for the Vikings to get Hawkinson back. It's crazy. They're beat up, and they're 2-0 and looking really good. So, game that can go either way. I think it's so close that I would take the Vikings plus 2.5 if I have to have to. But, again, I kind of explained how the matchup favors the Texans a little bit more. So, I could see that winning by 3 as well. It's a tough one. Tough one overall. I'll take who I think is the better team, even though it's in Minnesota. I'll, I'll take the Texans there in a squeaker. A tight one. Should be good. Eagles and Saints. The Saints are the hottest team in football. They look really good on both sides of the ball. A lot of people are picking them just because they're the hottest team in football and they're 2-0. and I don't know if that's a great reason to pick them. I know they look really good right now. They definitely could win this game. I'm going to take the Eagles. I think it's a little bold. They started off as favorite, fav, the favorites in this game, and it's dropped all the way down to three. So seems like the... Um, uh, people putting money on the game are confident. It seems like Vegas is a little confident with the Saints, but... Uh, you know, the Saints very well could win this game. They look really good right now. Are they better than expected? Yes. Are they, you know, again, the reasoning people are picking them is because they're the most dominant team right now. It's only been two weeks. Does it mean they're going to be that good every week? No, they're not going to be that good every week. Maybe it's this week, though. But the main reason I'm picking the Eagles, it is tough without A.J. Brown. I'd actually be pretty confident with A.J. Brown. I think they'd be favored, actually. Uh, but the Saints have not seen the Eagles run game yet, right? They've played the the Panthers that game got out of hand fast, and the Cowboys don't have any run game anymore, and that game got out of hand fast. So the Saints' key to success here is what do, exactly what they did the last two weeks is get up big right away, which automatically, by default, removes the run game. They absolutely need to do that. But I think the Eagles could stay alive in this game. Uh, that run game is something different, something the Saints have not seen yet. The Eagles are one of the very best in football, controlling the clock, winning the time of possession. So they're going to have to deal with Hurts and Barkley. The Saints run a lot of man coverage. They're one of the best teams running man coverage under Dennis Allen. But typically, man coverage doesn't work well with running quarterbacks. And the Eagles have one of the very best, and he looked really good running the football last week in Jalen Hurts, while Barkley has to be a big part of that game plan. So uh, that's another reason I like the Eagles. I think they'll slow down Camaro. They won't stop them. They won't do. They won't be embarrassed like the Cowboys were for sure. Um, you know, at Vic Fangio, you know, under some heat lately because he's too old school. You know, things are changing. But Saints are running a very you know typical pro style West Coast offense. I think Fangio could game plan for that. They still have some playmakers on that defense. I think there's going to be a lot of running clock in this game. So the 26-24 is a, is a big-time shootout for the amount of, of running clock. I think the Eagles are really marched down the field on the ground. I think the Saints can do it through the air or on the ground as well. But, you know, I think people buying in a little too much. Even the Saints could very well go 3-0. and You know, I, I, we can't just keep picking them because they're 2-0. and It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But they are a good football team. I'll take the Eagles, and I like them plus three. I can't sit here and guarantee they win the football game. The Saints are really good. They're at home. Eagles don't have A.J. Brown, so I can't guarantee it, but the Eagles do a really good job of keeping games close. They're not going to get embarrassed like the Panthers or the Cowboys did, so this game should be a field goal game. I'm predicting less, whether it goes New Orleans' way or Philly's way, um, but you know, if the Saints go out here and destroy the Eagles, like, okay, something – Something's going on here, and, and, and but this, again, something is going on because the Saints look really good. But gut feeling just tells me the Eagles is a totally different type of matchup for the Saints. But thought that last week with the Cowboys as well. So I, at least I did pick them in Week One. I better have. But that uh, this should be a really good game. Chargers and Steelers. We do have to monitor Justin Herbert. He was not spotted just before recording this. He was not spotted in the early portion of uh, practice. But I also heard. From Harbaugh, you know, his, I didn't hear from him directly. He didn't speak to me, but that's what it sounded like. But he, we did hear from Harbaugh that uh, positive things. Like, it's not too, too much to worry about there with Herbert. Tough one to pick. Steelers are fair by a little bit at home. I'll take the Chargers. The reason the Steelers can win is that defense looks elite right now. They're at home, and they can run the football. And I still... It hasn't really showed yet, but the, I still worry about the Chargers' run-stopping ability. I do think you can run on them. Um, they played the Raiders, who are awful against the run right now, and the Panthers, same thing, and they were down by so much. So I do think the Steelers, if the Steelers win, it's because elite defense and 
great running of the football against a defense that could be weak stopping the run. Um, you know, but the Chargers, the reason I like the, I like the way their defense is playing. J.K. Dobbins is playing very well in offense too. Uh, they do have something in their back pocket with Justin Herbert. Just you know, at any time if they have to throw, they can throw the ball. Just because they have been mainly running doesn't mean they can't throw. So they could be a little a little sneaky in that regard. Um, Harbaugh finds ways to win these games. You know, Harbaugh versus Ty- Tomlin. You know, they they love these games. A physical defensive game, grind it out. Harbaugh is really good at finding ways to win these types of games. And it, the, but the quarterback difference is the reason I'm picking the Chargers as well. Justin Fields is kind of bound. Could be this week. Maybe it's not this week to, you know, be the reason they lost perhaps. But again, it was a good matchup for them last week against the Broncos in terms of running the football, really bad run defense. And they still were kind of struggling to score points and, and kind of kept sort of, I wasn't ever worried, but sort of kind of kept the Broncos in the game. So if they do that against the Chargers, I think Herbert, J.K. Dobbins, Harbaugh, I, in, in the defense who has playmaking ability, I think they'll find ways to win, to take the game from them and, and win it. So, and then maybe a, a little bit of a test for the Steelers offensive line, who in the past has not been good, but so far it's been pretty good. Uh, but they, have played the Falcons, whose pass rush really isn't doing much right now. And then last week they played the Broncos, not the greatest pass rush in the world. The Chargers got some good options out there in terms of an edge rush. So another reason I like the Chargers. So could argue both sides. Steelers run game, home, elite defense, TJ Watt. Uh, I do like the Chargers offense line, though. But the Chargers is having, you know, maybe being able to make that extra play and creating it on both sides with Herbert, Dobbins, and creating that extra play against Justin Fields. I like the under in this game. Uh, it's at 36. It is pretty low, so it is a little scary. There, There is a part of me that I think the Chargers could explode a little bit more, you know, score in the 20s. The Steelers just cannot get the ball in the end zone. They haven't done it much at all, even though they're 2-0. and oh. And the Chargers, the drives take forever for these teams, and they're not getting in, in the end zone a ton. So it really feels like it should be under 36, where I have a 29 final. So, um Again, there's going to be some random weeks where people don't expect the Chargers to score a lot, and they probably do. Could it be this week? I don't really see it against Steelers' defense, but that kind of makes it a little scary. But, man, that should stay under. But Hardball, Tom, and they love these types of games. It's bound to be one of these games. But give me the uh, technically an upset here uh, with the Chargers' battle. For o for three and oh, who's gonna be three and oh? We will see. Make sure to check out our week three picks video with the boys already up on the channel for this week. I have power rankings as well. Make sure to turn notifications on so you don't miss any of the content we have every single week. But Broncos and Bucks. Again, we talked about it historically. 0-2 teams could be a little sneaky in week three. I just don't love the matchup for the Broncos. But I guess the good thing is that the Bucks are a little beat up. Good thing for the Broncos. Uh, not a good thing for football because the Bucks could be really they are really good right now. They could be really good, really good if they're healthy. So hopefully they get healthy healthier soon. But Buccaneers are typically a good stopping a run. They're a little beat up in the secondary. So how you beat them is just being very consistent, airing it out. But your golf couldn't really do that. So is Bo Nix gonna be able to do it? I think Bo Nix plays a little bit better this week. But I just don't trust them to do enough. Then the Bucks offense takes care of business. Again, the Broncos could actually have one of their better offensive outings in this game because the 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 Bucks are beat up. But um, Bucks should be able to run the ball well. Rashad White a little beat up, but I think he'll play. He'll run well. Bucky Irving will run well. Baker will run run well, and then he'll connect with his his big time receivers at times as well. So uh, honestly, I would normally predict the Bucks. I love the matchup. I would pick pick them to win more than this, but just the ultimate trap in NFL history is Week Three against those teams that look bad. You know, some of these teams that look really bad, they're they're it's a little bit of a mirage. They might they might be a little bit better. I don't know if it's the Broncos. I don't know if the Broncos are one of those teams right now. Just big time struggles on offense. Uh, so I will take the Bucks, winning twenty four sixteen, but not one I would put money on there. Panthers and Raiders. Andy Dalton is starting at quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, which makes things interesting. He is undefeated against the Raiders in his career, which is pretty. Pretty wild, and they could pull off an upset here. Sneaky 0-2 team. It is kind of tough to predict. I Straight up, I like the Raiders. I didn't really, I, you know, I didn't hesitate too much with that one, but against the spread, it's a little tough. I think the Panthers should cover. I think tough game planning for Andy Dalton. We haven't seen any tape on him in Dave Canales' offense, and he might be able to spread the ball out a little more. The offensive line is protected a little better than people thought, so could they limit 
The Raiders really good defensive line. They're not going to stop it. Uh, and then could Dalton get it to guys like that have been open like Adam Thielen? It's definitely possible. Raiders don't have much of a run game at all. The run game is brutal right now. So another reason the Panthers could do it, but the Raiders are just better. Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins, these guys find ways to make plays. The defense is really good. Um, you know, they would hold Bryce Young offense probably to 10 or less points, I'd say for sure, but it's Andy Dalton. Uh, and then offensively, they have the weapons. Devonta Adams, Brock Bowers, Jacoby Myers. They really tough the game plan for uh, because the mismatch of Brock Bowers and the chess piece that he is, and it opens things up for the better player in Devonta Adams, for an example. They really got to get that run game going, though. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll see if they finally can do that. But something that stands out is, is the Panthers benching Bryce Young this early, this early, this soon with his new staff. That tells me they are very confident that Andy Dalton is better. There was zero hesitation there. If they thought they could make Bryce Young better than Andy Dalton or he could be better, after two weeks, they would still keep him in. So they are extremely confident that they can win football games. If they didn't think they could win football games right now, regardless, they wouldn't do it either. But they are extremely confident they can win football games right now and that Andy Dalton is better. And I'll trust them a little bit. I don't know how many football games they can win, but I'm gonna. It's just they feel so confident. And I do like Dave Canales that I'll trust them. So that they could be a little sneaky for that reason in this one. The Raiders did not look good against the Chargers. They didn't look good for a portion of the Ravens game, but it is the Ravens, and they end up beating them. They end up looking good down the stretch. So I'll take the better team in this one, but it could be a trap game here. Definitely would not put money on this one. Dolphins and Seahawks. Skylar Thompson starting for the Dolphins, and that makes it, I guess, a little risky on my over pick, but I think this game goes over. I have a, a, a gut feeling, but there's some logic behind it, not just the gut. Uh, over 41 and a half. I think most people think uh, Skylar Thompson, and it's possible. It's a risky. It's risky of me to put that there. It's possible that the Skylar Thompson-led offense with a, a not-so-great offensive line doesn't do much against a Mike McDonald defense. It's possible. Like, it's possible they score 10 points out there, of course. But I think people think just because it's Skylar Thompson means low-scoring game, they're not going to score a, a whole lot. But the Dolphins are actually a pretty good rushing team. Mike McDaniel hasn't really realized that yet. He's gone away from the run a little too much. But Mostert could be back. But even if not, A-Chan could run. Wilson, Jalen Wright, I'm confident all those guys can run. But A-Chan looks great. Looks like an absolute weapon. Um, so you kind of have to, you know, a different quarterback kind of gets in the minds of the opposing team's coaches. Like, how do you game plan for this as well? We saw Malik Willis do pretty well last week. Um, so uh, Thompson's decent. I think he can play. He can play all right. He's got really good weapons, but the running game will be there. Gibson, Antonio Gibson, ripped off some explosive runs against the Seahawks last week. So I think the Dolphins can move the ball in this one with the weapons that they have, and they're, they're a little bit tougher. They're better with two, of course, but they're a little bit tougher of a game plan. But I don't think they go off offensively. I think the Seahawks do well offensively. The Dolphins are putrid stopping the run right now. A lot of teams are. They're very bad stopping the run. Uh, we'll see if Kenneth Walker's back, but even though even if not, Charbonnet should be able to do some damage. But I think Walker will play, and then he can go off. The Seahawks passing game looks really good. They're tough to game plan for because it's such a new system. There's some spread looks in there. Um, you know, they're really spreading the ball around. JSN's starting to emerge even more. DK's a problem. Uh, the Dolphins have to get so much better stopping a run. They're focused on that, but the Seahawks air attack could be you know a problem and. Dolphins aren't getting much pass. Rush Geno's looking pretty good. So I think the Seahawks score some points in this, in this game. I think both teams score more than, than people think. 27-20 is what I have. Uh, I'm going to say it again. I, I, I do really like the 41.5 over because that's low, it, but it is risky. It is risky because Skylar Thompson is in that quarterback, and he didn't look good when he got thrown in there against the Bills, but it's a little different when you have the week to prepare. But give me Seattle 27-20. That, that, that could be an interesting one. Again, don't... We saw back of quarterback Malik far worse than Skylar Thompson. Malik Willis win last week, so I guess we can't fully sleep on that. Dolphins still got some some playmakers out there. Ravens and Cowboys in a shootout. I have the over. Over is pretty somewhat high, 48 and a half. I think I definitely think it goes over. The, the Ravens, very disappointing so far. They're 0 and 2. You know, they're missing some guys on the staff and on you know the team from last year. So maybe they've taken taken a step down, but they've also been trying some things out. They've been passing a little bit more than they normally do. They've been trying to win in that way. It's not really working. The Lions are doing something similar. But they're a run first team. I Harbaugh is gonna have a bad taste in his mouth that they're 0 2. They're gonna come out here and play the matchup. The Cowboys cannot stop the run. The Ravens will pound the football of Derrick Henry. And they'll run Lamar Jackson, and they will run up the score. Still waiting for one of these classic Ravens 
run up the score games. I thought it was going to be last week. I mean, if they could have turned field goals into touchdowns or if they would have ran the ball more, then they would have they would have put up a lot of points and they would have won the game. They're not going to mess around this week. They'll do that. It is tough because the Cowboys are typically good in the regular season at home, and, and they're a talented enough team to win this game. But, yeah, the one matchup thing that stands out to me is the Ravens' run game versus the Cowboys' run defense. The Ravens' defense isn't as good as the pass. And, of course, Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, these guys can get going. I think they have a pretty decent game, and they should score some points. But the one thing that just stands out, like obviously stands out to me, Ravens' run game versus the Cowboys' run defense. So I'll take the Ravens in this one, minus one and a half. Um you know, if you really confident with the Ravens winning, you could bet that one and a half because it's basically, you know, you feel better with a money line, pair it with something else. Uh, but Cowboys could win it. You're at home here. But I do like the over. I mean, this should be – I can even see a scenario where the Ravens, like, really score a ton of points, more than 30, and the Cowboys score a little less. But 30 to 24 is what I'm feeling. I think a lot of offense in this one in Dallas on Sunday – I like the over. The 49ers, who are a little beat up, more than a little beat up. Christian McCaffrey still out. Debo Samuel now is out. That's tough. I mean, without McCaffrey, Samuel's such a – he's even more of a big, you know, bigger part of that offense. So they're beat up. But talk about beat up. The Rams are the most depleted team in football right now. It is absurd how beat up they are across the whole offensive line for the most part. They're two-star receivers. A corner is out. A safety is out. I mean, they, they are – just destroyed with it. Higby's been out with destroyed with injuries. The Niners are a team that they're a good football team and they're going to give it to you. Even if key players are out, it's the type of team that they are. I love the Niners. This game seven is a big line, a big spread, especially looking at last week. Anyone that had a big spread like this, they either lost the game or did not cover. So maybe it's a little scary. I like the Niners, the Niners in week one, Combine all the performances, the Niners were the best team in football, and they played the Jets, a good team uh, in prime time without McCaffrey, a little beat up. It was the best team in football. It wasn't much of a surprise because they're typically the best team in football at this time of the year under Shanahan with this team. But then you could say, what happened last week? They just have a weird matchup issue. Brock Purdy has a weird ma- matchup issue with Brian Flores' defense and the Vikings, who are, seem to be a really good team. So we, I, I'm, I'm throwing that game out the window. Forget that game. The Niners could be very well be the most dominant team in football throughout the, the whole season, but definitely around this range. And they're playing a depleted Rams team. I think they're going to give it to them. I think Mason has a big game. I think Purdy really steps up in this one, and the defense does just enough. 31-16, to 16, a big win for the Niners. I got them covering that seven. I think worst case, they win by 10. I think that's worst case there. So I'm, I, if, if they don't, if they if this game's close, even if they win and it's close, I'm like, okay, they need to get somebody back, and something's not right here. But I, I'm really confident with them uh, winning this one in an ass-beating ass fashion. The Rams, are just, they're a very good team if they're healthy, and it's just unfortunate um, with their – Current situation there, unfortunate. Lions and Cardinals should be a good one here. I could go either way. The Lions are fair by three. I think it's a really good line because I have them winning by three, and I'm obviously passing on that. I do have them getting the over with a total of 57 points here, but I, it's still it's the highest over of the week, so it makes it a little scary. It was at 52 and a half, and there is a chance where you know the Lions go back to their old game of just pounding the football, and that drains a whole lot of clock and. Kyler should use his legs a lot, so there could be a lot of clock coming off. So I, it's just, even though I have a, you know the highest total of the week, I wouldn't, I still wouldn't go, I wouldn't take the over. Still, I would not not saying take the under. Obviously, I have the over, but uh, but I have the Lions wing three to twenty seven. It's really going to a lot. A lot of it's going to depend on the Lions. They've been kind of testing some things out the last couple weeks. Even the game they won, being more of a pass first team than a run first team. They went back to their old ways in overtime against the Rams. It looked really good. I think a lot of people are going to look at how both these teams played the Rams and think, okay, the Cardinals may have the edge there, so that's interesting as well. Uh, But the Lions got to go back to pounding the football. If they pound the football, they'll win this game. The Cardinals will struggle to stop the run. Uh, But the Cardinals look really good right now. Very much impressed with the Cardinals. Uh, uh, The team, I, I said, I'd buy stock in them. And they fall just short in this game. But Kyler could go out and win this game. He can have a very solid game, especially because the Lions run a lot of man coverage recently. And that's kind of a no-no against, and maybe they run some more zone, but that's a no against a scrambling quarterback like Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison Jr. Is gonna, he, could beat the, he could beat that man coverage for sure. So they could have a day offensively. If the Lions just put it all on golf again, they'll probably lose the game. But I, I think they'll run the ball a bit. In the, in the air, they'll get it. And I think they can win by the same time. I think if they... Go all out passing the ball. I still think they can win the game. Um, Hutchinson should 
slow Kyler Murray down a little bit, actually get some pressure on him. The Rams were very depleted last week, so it was kind of an easy matchup for them, even though they very much impressed. So 3-27, if I have to pick against the spread, I'll actually go with the Lions, I think, in that one. I, I you know, So I, do, I am picking every game against the spread. Just don't touch that one. Sunday night football, the Chiefs and the Falcons. The Falcons, what a win they got against the Eagles. Clutch win, but I love that. They're starting to show chemistry, improvement, progression, and they'll continue to do that throughout the season. They're going to be a really good football team, and they could win this one because the Chiefs don't have much of a running game, and that's kind of how you beat the Falcons right now. So that kind of, and the Falcons are home. They should get some things going through the in, in, through the air and on the ground with Bijan. Again, they, they could win through the air on the ground. And that's why they could win this game, but... I think Mahomes has a really good game in this one. He typically plays very well in domes, and he's going to be inside in this one in ATL. So I think he, him and Rasheed Rice kind of go off in this game. I think Spagnuolo will kind of throw some things at Kirk Cousins, who's still, you know, he's, at the end of the day, he's still coming back from that Achilles injury, even though he looked much better as that game went on last week. But they'll throw some random blitzes in there, um, you know, disguised coverages. So, But I, the main reason I think Mahomes has a damn good football game after he played pretty poorly for for Mahomes at least last week so wouldn't bet on it at all I could see the Falcons winning but it's hard to pick that three and a half is a weird line wouldn't touch it but I have the Chiefs winning in on Sunday night which should be a very fun game we have two Monday night football games the first one could definitely be a trap game I was almost tempted to beat the to pick the Jags in this one but it's tough to do that because they're playing pretty bad football right now the Bills are like one of the better teams in football I'll take the Bills I'm gonna take them in a squeaker and this game can go multiple different ways, but I'm going to take them in a squeaker. 24-23. Bills are the better team at the end of the day. Uh, but I like the Jags plus 5.5. I think they can win the game. People probably think I'm crazy for saying that. Uh, it's week 3. 0-2 teams play good in week 3 in the past. That shows that. Uh, and this could be one of those trap games. They played well against the Bills last year. The Bills are already without Matt Milano. Now they're and they're already without... Teron Johnson, their slot corner, but mainly focusing on the linebacker sp uh, position. They're without Terrell Bernard as well. Both starting linebackers, and I know they were without them for the Dolphins game, but Bernard got hurt during the Dolphins game. The Jags get the game plan for that. They, they expect it. They know what's there. And the Jags can run the ball. They just have to run the ball more, and, and I do worry about the Bills' run defense very much. So the Jags can come out, Jags can come out and pound the football and win with ETN, they definitely could do that. I could see it for sure being an upset on Monday Night Football. But even if things go to plan, like go perfectly for the Jags, I also could still see the Bills winning the game because Josh Allen and this team is just that good. James Cook looks really good. So things have to go perfect, perfectly for the Jags to have a chance to win. So I will, I will take the Bills in this one in a squeaker. I can totally see the upset because the run game – of the Jags versus the run defense of the Bills without their two stud linebackers. But Josh Allen, James Cook, they make that extra play and win the game, maybe on a last-second field goal even. I'll take the Bills 24-23, but I do like Jacksonville plus five, seen it around five and a half as well. Interesting one on Monday night. In the other Monday night football game, the Commanders versus the Bengals, a big spread of seven here, so it's a little tricky. You see all my picks against the spread for this week here uh, on the sides of me. Uh, but, yeah, Tricky part here on why my prediction might be a little risky is the Bengals are hurt on the interior defensive line and hasn't been playing great as it is. They cannot stop the run, uh, but Sheldon Rankins going to be questionable. B.J. Hill going to be questionable. They just brought in Lawrence Guy, who's a good addition. He's probably better at stopping the run than anybody on that def interior defensive line, but he just got in the building. So if both those guys are out, that is a little tricky because Brian Robinson and Jaden Daniels just ran the ball very, very well so they can control this game on the ground and run the clock. My issue with that is I think it's a breakout party for the Cincinnati Bengals offense at home prime time in week three. The Bengals usually start slow, then all of a sudden they get going. Here it is. The Washington Commanders defense is really struggling. They run a ton of man coverage under Dan Quinn with weak cornerbacks and the Bengals have Joe Burrow and we'll see if T Higgins is back or not but Jamar Chase a breakout game for Jamar Chase Jamar Chase is going to go off in this game and even if they want to run the ball then they can do that effectively I thought Singletary was kind of getting going against the commanders last week so again the factor for the commanders is run 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 start you want to start with if you get that coin toss you take the ball first you run the ball you control the clock you limit the Bengals chances because you will be able to run the ball on them my issue with that is I think the Bengals get a good lead early, throwing the ball through the air against the weak secondary man coverage defense here. Uh, you know, not much of an edge presence. They're really built in the interior. 
Uh, Jamar Chase has a big day, and they'll get a good lead, a multi-score lead where the commander's run is kind of taken away from them. So I'm banking on that. If they don't, if the Bengals don't, don't start good in this game, it's going to be very close, and they might get upset. So it's a little bit of a tricky one when putting money on it. I do like Jamar Chase going off and getting a touchdown, uh, but he has to he has to get going here. But I got the Bengals. Break it. I thought I was gonna have. I thought I was gonna have. Uh, like with the score, I thought I was gonna be crushing the the over under. But then I look at the over under, and they the Vegas seems to think the same thing. I think it was like forty eight and a half. So I wouldn't touch it. Wouldn't touch anything in this game. So, but it made me a little more confident when thinking it's gonna be a higher scoring game. Commanders on the ground, Bengals through the air. So, and again, here are all my spread picks for this week. It's a tough, interesting week. It's typically tough to pick earlier weeks because random things happen we always get going last year we had one of the best uh, against the spread uh, records in all of football so uh yeah we, we, I, i'm just excited for the the league the season to kind of start to take form take shape which typically it's coming week three four five around that range so really excited about that check out our other videos for this week we always have the recap videos as well so make sure to turn notifications on and subscribe much much appreciated been getting going on those youtube shorts having a lot of fun doing those check those out as well it's gonna do it thanks for watching goodbye